Oh, Son of Fragment. In your face, damn it. Time for a fist swamp. The fake seems like an idiot. But he was pretty impressive. No wonder he's the something self variety for a uh, little webbing. Something like that, I guess this means the real one's pretty strong too. That's when I hear the red pillow shatter and something comes falling down. Oh yeah, I forgot someone was stuck up there. Oh crap, wasn't he unconscious? Hey, Junpei Iori at your service! Ah. Before we have time to worry, the Junpei guys land right next to the melting peak with a loud thump. He then tries to strike a pulse but his leg must get numb or something because he start reading in pain without a word. Well yeah, he fell from pretty far up there after all. Do you think he's okay? In any sense I mean. Uh. I don't know. Anyway, we explained quick about our fix and all the other crap that's happened to Junpei sign who seems like he's doing okay. They say he came to Inabe because he heard Mitsuru-san crew man missing, but he got lost in his school. He happened to spot Takehiko-san and us from the connecting passageway and jumped down from there, but he had the worst timing. All the best, that would have been a pretty great comedy stunt. At any rate, we hurry to the cross and get Takehiko-san down quick, but he doesn't come to strike away, looks like he's pretty drained. Takehiko-san! Are you okay, Akihiko-san? Damn it! Who did this to you? I don't think Junpei has the original voice. I don't know. I um, really hate him. The shadow operatives, right, Junpei-san? Huh? Yeah, I am. But how do you guys know about that? Hey, weren't you using personas too? Oh, it's original voice. Like Junpei-san really doesn't know, so we end up having to explain everything in detail. Including our fight against Akiko san and his friend in the P1 Grand Prix the other day. So that's how Akihiko san got caught. I'm still kind of fuzzy on this stuff about the TV world and whatnot, but I think I get the gist of it. Oh, right. I never introduced myself properly. I'm Junpei Iori. People call me the Shadow Operative's lethal weapon. Thanks for sticking up for Akihiko san earlier. Uh. I'm Yukiko Amagi, a third year at Yasugami High. What's up? I'm Kanji Tatsumi, a second year. And, uh, who's this Blue Daruma doll? Blue Daruma doll. Who are you calling a Blue Daruma doll? I'm an Adora Bear. Adora Bear, yeah. Adora Bear? Oh, is that one of the monsters that shows up in Featherman? <laughs> Could you not know how popular I am, you sweaty bearded batter? Oh, uh, what's with all the ruckus? I'm trying to sleep here. Uh, Akihiko-san! Aki! You're awake! Oh, thank goodness he's alive! He wouldn't come around. I was getting worried, man. Relax. I was just taking a nap to get back some of the energy they stole. He's got some balls for the duty in situation. But Akiko-san's gotta know too, he's saying this stuff to keep us calm, but the guy looks like he got a lot to recover from. He's telling us how the cross-like things he was on wasn't just for sure. Being tied up to it felt like his strength was getting drained. Akiko-san thanks us all and then turns back to Junpei-san. But hey, it's been a while Junpei, were you the only one they called out? Uh, actually I was more of a lone samurai. <laughs> I got a call from Yucatan, but my phone ran out of juice during the call. <laughs> Yucatan, yeah, the infamous Yukari nickname. When I got here, something weird had happened to the town. I thought everyone was headed for this Tartarus looking tower, so I came to check it out. Oh, a Yucatan should be with Ken, Koromaru, and this Labrys girl, who I guess is Igus' sister. I never met her, though. Even Ken got called up? Oh man, I'm ashamed of myself. But why did you come to Inaba? Did you find out something about Labrys' case? Well, we heard that the Shadow Presence had ramped up in Inaba. We were headed here to look into why that happened. But while we were on our way, our car got ambushed and... Well, you know the rest. Damn it! That culprit's one sick bastard! How dare he torture you! Huh? They didn't torture me or anything. 
They didn't? But you're wounded all over, and your clothes are all ripped up. <laughs> clothes? What about my clothes? Uh. Uh, uh. <laughs> what are you saying, Junpei? Aki always looks like me. <laughs> God damn it, Ted! Shut your damn mouth! Huh? huh? Oh, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, never mind, Akiko-san. Uh, sorry for talking weird like that. Yeah, damn it, Ted. That was too close. All guys got stuff they don't want people to know about. It ain't a matter of hiding the truth or not. There's just a time and a place to bring it up. And you don't go bring it up for other people. Oh, that reminds me, though. This feels like that other thing we know all too well. Is it just me? So, you notice too. I mean, it's like, this is the dark hour, right? Yeah, that is true. Dark hour? What's that? Basically, the dark hour is a hidden time that ordinary people don't know about. We fought once to get rid of it. But that used to only last about an hour every night. What's happening to this town doesn't seem so simple. That reminds me, General Teddy mentioned something like that. <laughs> the P1 Climax! It's the end of the world! One-on-one -on -one deathmatch that's worthy of the name Climax! And best of all, if you don't win the one-on-one -on -one tournament to the finish within the hour, the world will end! No punches pulled this time! We explained to Akiko-san what the fake Teddy said on the Midnight Channel right before our town got messed up. That's not good. We have to meet up with Mitsuru and the others as soon as possible. Yeah, now that I think about it, if we don't do something inside of an hour, does that mean the world gets stuck this way it is? We better hurry. Just as we're about to get going, we run into a problem. The damn door won't open. What the hell is this shit? Did we continue? Yeah. What lies in wait? An accomplice and... Yeah, this is open on one. 